Hi, um, welcome to my talk about uh, new USB device uh, Create CPI. Um, my name is Johan Fischer. I'm uh, ND engineer for Nordic uh, Semiconductor and the USB maintainer for CFI project. Um, we are working uh, on new USB support for a while and one of one part of this is USB, new USB device support, yeah. And um, the new stack uh, was merged uh, last year uh, with uh, CDCSM implementation and um, this year we also moved uh, or ported a uh, few uh, classes to, to the new uh, device support. So the current state is that we have uh, three, also the whole the current state for the new device support is that we have three uh, UDC drivers. It's for uh, NF USB D controller, uh, for the Kinetis uh, key, uh, for Kinetis controller used on key 64 or 22, key 22 devices. Um, we have uh, three uh, class implementations for as for Bluetooth uh, host control, controller interface, USB transport layer, uh, CDCSM, CDC ECM, and USB mass uh, storage class. Uh, the mass storage class was completely written by uh, Tomas, and it's uh, yeah, actually in very good state now. If if we compare that with uh, with uh, previous implementation, yeah, and this. Still something to do, yeah. Uh, we have a few classes that uh, needs to be ported. Um, so Thomas is working on audio uh, class. Um, I started HID porting, um, yeah. And then what remains is USB review. Um, and this we probably scraped because, yeah. Um, we have three uh, classes for networking. Uh, in the current implementation, it's uh, CDC, e ECM, EEM, and uh, ANDES, and I think it uh, uh, would be a good uh, solution to replace ANDES with CDC and CM class. And yeah, uh, most storage is wrong, yeah, we, have, we already have that. Yeah, that's a typo in the, in the slide. So, what, uh, what is it about uh, this talk, yeah? Um, uh, let's uh, look at this uh, uh, function ex example. It's um, it's a device um, that uh, implements CDC uh, ECM class and provides this uh, serial functionality to the host. Yeah. Um, it's on the CFI side. It's um, uh, what uh, application application C is a, a virtual UART controller or virtual UART interface uh, provided by uh, our CDC implementation. And uh, the logical connection uh, to the host is the yeah, serial connection. Uh, um, if you look uh, deeper, it's um, on, the, on the USB uh, framework, it's, uh, the logical connection is uh, control, control pipe uh, and interrupt uh, in pipe and um, uh, there is one line is missing uh, uh, two for bulk in and out uh, pipes yeah? and uh, actual connection is USB uh, and uh, USB class CPI is about um, this interface in the in the red circle yeah? <laughs> uh, and it's a generic part uh, that each uh, class implementation has to use. Yeah? Um, yeah, so, so the, for the class, the class implementation provides some functionality to the host and uh, the communication flow, flow or, uh, through uh, control, uh, interrupt and bulk end pipes, yeah, in, at least in our example here. Yeah, and, uh, uh, but uh, this, uh, 
CDC, SAM implementation uses um, resources provided by uh, device uh, controller driver and by device support, like uh, endpoints. Uh, and um, at the interface, uh, so each of these, uh, so the functionality or how the host know what, uh, how the pipes are provided or what in endpoints are used, it's described in interface descriptor and endpoint descriptors. Uh, so that's an uh, example. It's one fancy interface descriptor. It's not CDC SAM, um, but it's, um, yeah, it looks like, for, if, if, if you look at uh, code, it looks like uh, CDC ECM uh, interface descriptor. So then, uh, and um, so I'll, all the information is uh, inside this interface descriptor. Yeah, you can see this uh, number of endpoints. There's the first interface. It doesn't have any endpoints. It's set to zero. And then there's uh, one alternative or alternate uh, for the first interface, which uh, where the number of endpoints is set to two. And uh, then two endpoint descriptors follows. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, and it's uh, at the end there is a nil descriptor that is yeah like <laughs> like it uh, says uh, a terminator or a nil descriptor. So if the device tag passes this part uh, of the descriptor, is now it's uh, it marks the end of this specific uh, interface descriptor. Yeah. And so every implementation for uh, for the class requires at least one interface descriptor. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, endpoints are optional, yeah? For example, uh, USB DFU class doesn't provide any, end, doesn't need any endpoints, yeah? They're just interfaces that uh, describe actually the, yeah, this firmware layout. Yeah. Uh, so all the informa information that uh, the host class and uh, the device tech needs to know about uh, specific class implementation, implementation is provided by the interface descriptors. Yeah. And interface descriptors are always a part of a configuration descriptor. And so interfaces are part of a configuration. And uh, only one configuration can be active at a time. Yeah. With the new stack, we support multiple configurations. Yeah, it's a uh, improvement, <laughs> actually. And um, uh, as it uh, was not enough, we also support multiple device instances. The reason for that is that we decided to um, support multi multiple device controllers. So there are not that many SOCs or uh, yeah, SOCs actually that uh, have uh, multiple device controllers, uh, but. We have few of them in the tree uh, from NXP on TC, for example, and it, with new stack, it is possible to use uh, yeah, multiple device controllers. And each of these uh, of the controller requires a own device instance. So, and uh, for the, from that is that each so a class instance can be or needs to be assigned to a configuration, and then a device instance can have multiple configurations yeah, that um, the host can select. Um, yeah, and everything above the class or but its class communicate to is for the, for the, from the class point of view is application. Even if it's a virtual UART for the class, virtual UART uh, or everything that connects to, the, to this uh, in virtual UART interface is application, the same for the emulated network device, yeah. And as well that the new, new device support is that uh, application is responsible for, for the configuration, yeah. In the current uh, device support, there are a lot of car config options to set uh, vendor ID, product ID. Um, it's uh, uh, remote wake up capabilities. Yeah, they are actually obtained from the driver, but um, yeah, self-powered or not self-powered and so on. But uh, in, in, the, 
in the new support, it's uh, the application is responsible for the setting and configurations. So an application must instantiate uh, one or more USB device instances. They are always placed in uh, in in the in the application context, yeah. and um, application must instantiate at least one configuration per device per device instance, yeah, like uh, the diagram here. And application must add and the desired class instance to a specific configuration. Like if we if the if uh, a CDC SAM implementation has to be a part of this configuration, that it's up to application to uh, register this class. And application must initiate specific USB device instance. There are two steps. Yeah, one is to call USB uh, D init and the second one USB D enable. The reason for that is that yeah, it's like two steps. The the uh, stack passes all the pieces or other instances on fixed the descriptors, updates the interface numbers and endpoints. And after that, uh, an instance can be enabled. It can be disabled anytime and enabled again. So it's, and the other reason is that uh, it's, if the device controller supports uh, VBUS and detection and not, not every controller is capable, but if it can uh, send an event to the host and uh, the application will be notified that uh, after the initialization, uh, it's the device is connected to the host or to a charger port, for example, huh? uh, and configure some power yeah, delivery device. Um, yeah, that's an example of what the application is, uh, needs to do for before it can enable USB. Uh, device uh, support. Uh, we have a helper markers to uh, instantiate a device context and uh, helper markers to define a configuration. Yeah. And the same for the string descriptors, but they are optional. Yeah, no one device uh, has to use uh, a string descriptor. Yeah, so it's then and there's a few steps in the code itself. Yeah, like uh, a descriptor configuration register the class. Um, each uh, class instance has um, or must have a name, like uh, humans. Um, it's always uh, and it's postfixed with a number, yeah, depending on the uh, number of instances. If there are two CDC SAM, there will be two CDC SAM or CDC SAM one. So, and yeah, after initialization, yeah, USB can be enabled or disabled. Um, multiple times, yeah, it's uh, just an example. And uh, finally shutdown. After shutdown, everything, anything is uh, deinitialized and um, yeah, other classes will be removed from the context of USB uh, device context. Um, there's a, it's a bit uh, annoying to have uh, this part for testing, for example, or for development. So there's an alternative for that. Uh, we have a shell support for USB uh, device. Um, this is a sample that enables uh, as we have the settings and um, yeah, and then for testing you can just uh, load some defaults. Uh, it's uh, the, the commands there. Uh, there need some polish or some uh, some more improvements, but you can uh, load some defaults. It's uh, Pre-configured device uh, um, string descriptors uh, add on configuration. For example, here you can see it's uh, there's a class with name loopback uh, zero that will be added to configuration one and change PID uh, remote backup capability. Finally, synthesize and device and enable. Uh, and uh, after device is enabled, the host will enumerate the device. It will be recognizable by the host. Uh, and if if uh, application does need uh, USB support anymore, it can disable uh, or shut down the device. After shutdown, it can be reconfigured and initialized and enabled again. Yeah. And um, for each of these uh, steps, there's some action is uh, required uh, um, for for the classes or for class instances. And uh, that actually uh, my my 
goal is to, to show this uh, requirements for the class API. So what we need for for the API itself, we need an initialization handler. If instance if inst instance is a part of a configuration that's initialized, um, shutdown handler. Uh, a handler for associated configuration is selected. Yeah, if the host selects, for example, there's just two configurations and the uh, instance is uh, part of configuration two and host selects this configuration, the instance will be notified that it's the, this configur the con configuration he part of, of, of he is now active. Yeah, and uh, if the endpoints are active, and think some, there could be some request from the host. Um, the same for disable, and um, there are two handlers for USB control requests. Uh, they're separated in this in the new uh, uh, stack. Uh, the one is for two host, uh, and the other one two device. Uh, that's um, direction of the data stage of the data transfer. And this interface configuration update handler um, and endpoint. There's one handler for all the finished or completed uh, uh, transfer requests. We also have suspend and resume handlers, but that and feature halt, but it's not, uh, yeah, it's not that important. Now. <laughs> so. uh, class instantiation, yeah. Um, that's the same, that's actually problematic part and um, I have the same issues we have with devices, so how to inst instantiate a device. Um, so the approach here is uh, we have a USB defined macro uh, that uh, needs to be used uh, for each approaches, but uh, yeah, the first one is to use uh, a device tree if a device model is involved. Uh, like for the C CDCSAM that uh, emulate, uh, emulate uh, UART interface and UART interface is described in device tree. Here we can use uh, entity instance for each uh, status OK macro. If a uh, device model is not involved, then um, yeah, the only way is to uh, define an instantiation macro for the user or, or for the application. And uh, yeah, the last approach is uh, the combination of uh, of the instantiation, instantiation macro and uh, a listify macro. That is what mass storage, uh, the new mass storage controller uh, class uh, implements. Yeah, and uh, we have also very bad examples in in the current USB device support. I will talk tomorrow about that. This is, for example, USB HID class implementation that uh, uses USB device model. And not use the uh, device model from Sapphire. Yeah. Uh, here's an example. We uh, that is from CDCSM. Uh, you can see there is uh, one uh, API for the class. This is USB D class API structure, and the other one is Ethernet uh, controller driver API because ECM emulates uh, Ethernet controller. So we have to. So this in, uh, implementation uses two APIs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, instantiation in, is uh, happens in this uh, huge macro, <laughs> uh, where for each instance, also a descriptor is defined. Each instance has own descriptor. Uh, it's uh, instead um, string descriptor, uh, and yeah, finally use the macro. Um, then um, you can see there are a few as a, in USB D class API uh, has all this. Uh, there are all these handlers. Uh, uh, most of them are optional. Yeah, it's depending on the class implementation to use them or to implement them or not. Uh, and for example, um, we, we will start with uh, init handler. So it's, it's um, called as result of USB unit. Uh, USB day init. Every time USB day init is uh, called from the application, uh, later um, this handler will also be called on from from the stack in the stack contents. Um, 
the stack updates uh, are the interface number and endpoint addresses. And um, as uh, only the in instance or class implementation serves no details about the uh, interface descriptor. Yeah, that can be very specific. It's the uh, so the class can update all these missing parts. Yeah, that uh, the stack doesn't know in during this uh, handler call. Yeah, and. Um, also, this handler can be used to instantiate interface string descriptors in the class. So, in the new support, uh, it's possible to um, to define or instantiate a string descriptor and assign it to a specific interface. Yeah, um, like for CDCSM, uh, it is used for the uh, for the MAC for the remote MAC address. Um, and here's an example from CDCSM of the init handler implementation. Uh, then here we can uh, see that uh, the new descriptor will be, will be inserted to uh, device context and uh, the number of the or the index of the uh, of the new string descriptor will be updated in the interface descriptor. And uh, the shutdown is opposite of uh, init handler. Yeah, it's, it's, it's called as a result of USPD shutdown. And uh, implementation can use it to remove on string descriptors, or not. It will be removed anyway later. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, kind of optional, but would be good behavior. Um, finally, the class instance is removed from the configuration by the stack. Yeah, uh, after USB shutdown. Uh, uh, class needs to be uh, re-registered yeah, to the context. Uh, then we have uh, class as uh, this enabled handler and update handler. There is a difference uh, that can be used uh, kind of in the same way, but it depends on on the class. Yeah. So the enabled handler is called when associated configuration is selected. It uh, notifies the instance that it's now part of active uh, USB configuration. But update handler is called when an interface alternate is selected. If you look at the descriptor uh, at the beginning, there are two, uh, there are one alternate for the interface, and if it's uh, if the host uh, updates alternate, this handler will be called. Both handler can be used to trigger specific actions in the implementation, like CDCSM uses update handler to enable network stack and start uh, first out transfer. Yeah, it, it, it initiate transfers. But uh, CDCSM uses, because CDCM doesn't have alternates, um, CDCM uses enable handler to enable UART LXIQ handling. And here's the, an example from CDCSM. And the important part is here that uh, if, if there is alternate interface, the implementation needs to check this alternate value and uh, handle accordingly. Like uh, ECM, if the alternate is selected to zero and there is no endpoints in this configuration, that means the, the, it's from the host driver, it like carry off. Yeah, that will be handled uh, by the driver. And if the alternate is one, then uh, the net inter interface uh, will be activated uh, or enabled. Um, there are two handlers who control requests. Um, uh, so class manipulation doesn't need to check transfer direction on its own. It's, uh, there are two handlers, one of them, but uh, with different signatures. So host to device is the, is the constant uh, constant pointer to constant structure. And for device to host, it's uh, just a constant pointer. So that's a difference in, in the function uh, signatures. Uh, the, the protocol error are indicated in the control uh, handling uh, by no variable from the thread. Uh, it's, um, it's 
This way, because uh, for the uh, device framework, we need uh, two, two error variables or two, two ways to signalize the error. The one is the non as protocol error, like uh, not supported control request. Uh, then the implementation would say the error variable is not supported, and um, the return value as function return value is used uh, for non-protocol errors, like uh, something very bad happens. And uh, in the current implementation or the current state of new device tech, this the thread will uh, panic and uh, stop it. Yeah. It will be removed later, for sure. Yeah, um, yeah the other thing is the USB vendor request. Yeah, that is, um, uh, I, will show you I can show it later. So, um, uh, the macro is used to register uh, specific vendor requests yeah, that are not directed to an interface or endpoint. So the stack cannot find what instance uh, should reply to this request and then instance can register a specific uh, vendor request uh, and the stack will look for that in a table and call uh, appreciate in, uh, instance. Yeah. So the handler self should not allocate or free uh, any buffers. This is done by the lower layer and by device framework. So it's just uh, control request handling, nothing more. And so the, finally, the class must not implement this handler if control buff is not used. Yeah. Here's an example from uh, CDC, no, from the mass storage class support, um, how to register uh, this vendor specific uh, request. Um, then we have transfer request competition handler. Um, th that is the, the handler is called as con consequence of a completed uh, interrupt bulk or isochronous transfer request. Yeah, there's only one for uh, for all of these uh, transfer types, yeah? but not for the control. Yeah, it's called regardless of the result. If it's timeout or cancelled, uh, no, timeout is <laughs> not support. Sorry, but if it's uh, transfer is cancelled, it's will called if the another error happens on the controller um, level. This uh, handler will be called. Yeah? And also here, class must not implement this handler if, it's, uh, if only control pipe is used. Yeah? Like uh, USB diffu wouldn't implement this uh, handler. And um, uh, the, the transfer selves are submitted by uh, USB D uh, AP and Q uh, function. Yeah. So that is uh, also from CDCSM implementation and. Um, you can see here the buffer is uh, for uh, interrupt transfer is allocated. That's for notification, CDCSM notification, and uh, finally enqueued by uh, USB D AP NQ. And when uh, the transfer is finished, uh, the request handler will be called. Yeah, and then um, the instance uh, needs to pass. So the so the information what endpoint was used yeah, for the transfer or the, what transfer is it can be obtained from the buffer info uh, structure from the net buff. And, uh, yeah. and finally, you need some helpers uh, in the implementation because each implementation know what uh, interface descriptor belongs to that one. And uh, yeah, to compare what endpoint was used and then you know what kind of transfer what is yeah if it's bulk uh, transfer interrupt or uh, bulk out bulk in and so on. the same for isochronous yeah uh, we don't have uh, specific support for uh, synchronous transfers yeah because uh, it can easily be implemented uh, with uh, a semaphore like uh, here in this uh, example and yeah, you can just give the semaphore in this request handler. Yeah. So the semaphore will be taken just after transfer. It, after transfer is enqueued, so, so after here <laughs> and at the bottom. Uh, and um, yeah, given in the last time competition handler. So 
we actually don't need specific uh, handling or some specific implementation with synchronous transfer. Each instance can implement it on its own. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, few more notes. Uh, it's actually, just one. All, all these handlers are executed in the trade context of a USB device stack. You should actually shouldn't block in these handlers. Yeah. And yeah, because the, if it's a control in out uh, handler, then you will block uh, the processing in device uh, framework. Um, yeah, some notes about future work, but it's, uh, it's uh, device, uh, new device support is still experimental. So next steps will be that we need some improvements for transfer handling, more abstraction. Um, and there's a big issue on on the GitHub uh, open for USB notification that we will, new, will implement for, that will be used for device, uh, for the new device support and also for the class instances. Um, like for example, if for the CSM, if baut, if the host changed the baut rate, yeah, we don't have an interface to notify application about that. And because it's the URTPI is used, yeah, and for this uh, purposes we will have USB notifications. Um, troubleshooting, if you have any, then yeah, the way, one way is to use by USB. In by USB, you can uh, just remove the host driver and uh, yeah, start uh, control or uh, bulk or whatever uh, transfer from by USB and look how you device a new instance behavior. Um, and I think we have USB device uh, support for shell, uh, as I mentioned before. And there's also uh, virtual controller implementation for USB host on USB device, uh, also with the shell support. Yeah. And that's another way to, to debug. Uh, uh, your device or your instance. Um, yeah, I almost done. If I can, that's a, a shell demo or shell sample in USB support, and it um, so it's uh, built for Kimo Cortex uh, M3 with USB host support and USB device enabled, yeah. uh, and. Um, yeah, the, we don't have that much uh, commands now, or the, uh, a bit, yeah, not not that user friendly, yeah, but uh, yeah, what we have is um, a helper command for USB defaults to enable it. Just uh, instantiate some uh, string descriptors and uh, uh, edits to the context. Um, and um, we have two, in this shell support, there are two configurations available, yeah? Two instances of configurations. Um, so we need at least uh, one yeah? to register the classes. Yeah? And finally, um, you can see there are two, um, two instances, one from CDCSM and one is uh, a loopback implementation that we use uh, for testing for the current and new device uh, stack sometimes. Yeah. So let's add the CDCM to configuration one. And um, yeah, now we can initialize uh, a USB device support and um, so now if, if that would be a real controller and you would attach your device uh, to the host, yeah? Vbus, if the controller supports detection of Vbus, you will see notification here from the, from the logging, for, from the mistake logging yeah? in the future that will be notified using USB notifications. Yeah? Um, yeah, the same for the host, we need enable
So and then we can, uh, for example, obtain uh, uh, read uh, device descriptor from our unconfigured device, which is always uh, zero. Yeah. And the same for the configuration descriptor. No, yeah, it's weird. Always, it's not zero. It's one. Nah. Sorry. There's no no configuration descriptors. Yeah, no. So that's uh, configuration. Yeah, there is a limited set of uh, commands that uh, we can use for for debugging. Yeah, you don't even need a, a real host for that, and we will use also the same. Yeah this virtual host and controller uh, device support for testing in the future. Um, yeah, that is from my side, actually. Questions? No questions? Question, yeah. I have one about uh, composite devices. If you are doing Um, about composite uh, devices, are you doing anything particular to handle the fact that on Windows uh, the um, different drivers, uh, if you ramp uh, and you add a new class over the same uh, BID and PID, you're going to get uh, the driver hell and you have to uninstall everything? Or are you just uh, taking this as <laughs> the user will take care? I don't know if I understood it correctly. Uh, so, uh, vendor ID and product ID. Uh, so, the samples we have, or what we support, and classes in um, in Zephyr do not require any specific vendor ID or the product ID to be recognized by the driver. Yeah. Let, let, let me ask it again. So, uh, if you are implementing a composite device, yeah. so with two classes. Uh, you will end up on Windows, in particular, it, uh, Linux makes a much better job, but on Windows you end up having driver uh, mismatch if one is implemented earlier or added earlier and then the other later, and Windows will get confused by this. Okay. You are not tackling this kind of, uh, of problems in the rewrite of the USB D stack. I'm actually I'm not aware of any. So what is missing in the new device support is support for OS descriptors and binary uh, object storage descriptors. Yeah, that is missing. Uh, I'm working on it, uh, but yeah, we have that in the current device support. But it's uh, kind of uh, yeah. I don't know. It's not. It's there. Yeah, it works. But <laughs> uh, yeah, it's. Uh, last time, so recently we changed uh, how, for example, string descriptors are handled a bit. So on the next step will be support for binary object storage and then OS. Also, micro OS descriptors are Microsoft specific. Yeah, it's not Linux doesn't care. The other thing is that uh, I forgot to mention: if the uh, uh, devices with uh, multiple interfaces, yeah, or class instance with multiple interfaces requires an uh, interface association descriptor yeah? and we will we will look at that yeah <coughs> for the so actually uh, cdc sem and dm should have yeah their per default we don't even have a config option for that if those requirements will be if if there's a multiple interfaces for an instance yeah then it should contain interface association descriptor. Yeah. There's a difference to uh, why CDCSM is a bit confusing because there's, or CDCM as whole, yeah, because there are these union descriptors. Yeah, and that is probably for the, for the yeah, first time in, before the, uh, this ECN, see, we, at the name, AID ECM was introduced. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay.